Oh, I think I just ranted then. It's really hard not to. I'm very tired from talking. My throat hurts. I'm Italian Czechoslovakian. Food is life. Uh, meat is life. I grew up in the early 90s. Back then, I would have been eating meat three times a day. And this is pre-Instagram and pre-Facebook. Um, sort of pre-YouTube, actually. Um, we just did not have enough information. Gluten-free wasn't a thing yet. Um, so meat was still a thing. Wheat was still a thing. Like, this is just pre-meat substitutes in general. I wish I grew up in like the vegan era. I just feel like my parents' choices at the supermarket were quite restrictive. We didn't know any better, basically. My parents always saw a iridologist um, along with our family doctor. We all got diagnosed in my family with a dairy intolerance. So I was quite young when that happened. I think I was like seven or something and the more and more you find out about that is pretty much every human is dairy intolerant if you think about it we're the only animal who switches from their mother's milk to another animal's milk it's just not quite right I used to have soy milk soy cheese soy yogurt also don't like that um but this was sort of at a time where soy was trending when i got uh, my first parasite in bali i was i think 14 or something and um, it was Jardia or Gardia. I still don't know how to pronounce that properly. Probably because I've suppressed it from my memory. My doctor said, your immune system just won't be the same again. So any like viral things in the air, I would just catch like that. And he wasn't lying. But what my doctor didn't say is along with my immune system not being the same, my digestive system won't ever be the same. My whole gut flora had changed, my enzymes had changed, and it took me quite a long time to realize why I was sick all the time. Just like almost like chronic fatigue level along with my acne started getting like worse and worse. So by the time I was 19, um, I went back to my iridologist because I had been really struggling with like fatigue, mood swings, gaining like a lot of water weight and then just this cystic acne just took over my face and I had never had a history of bad skin which was super annoying. The same iridologist that I grew up seeing detected a wheat intolerance and that was um, when I went gluten free. I was eating gluten free and and had you know already been dairy intolerant so I thought I had a really clean healthy diet right? The thing is, um, wheat is wheat, gluten is in wheat, if that makes sense. So what I should have done is cut out wheat products in general. It doesn't matter if you're buying gluten-free stuff because the protein gluten is spun out of wheat, but that product is still a wheat product. But I kept getting sick. So from 19 till about 24, um, I really wasn't well. My skin, my moods, my energy levels, so my lethargy, um, and my, I guess I was just like so irritated all the time. I had headaches all the time. Um, genuinely just felt like, how did I describe it to my doctor? I got this blood test one time when I was like 24. And he said, you know, what have you come in here for? And I said, I feel like I'm living with a hangover. And it's the only way that I can liken it. Um, now at 27, I know that it's because I was still eating wheat. And that would be my biggest piece of advice is if you feel like you're living with a hangover, you have headaches a lot, um, bloating a lot, and have irritable skin, get off the wheat. And definitely chat to like a naturopath and a dietitian about coming off wheat. And... Um, I think you will really see results like I did. So where am I in the story? I'm 24. Um, I get my second parasite, which was um, just a time. Uh, this one was called Shigella. Sounds a bit like shingles and salmonella. And it's as about enjoyable as both those things. That was again in Bali. So probably I'll never go to Bali again. Shigella again just sort of changed my gut flora um, but I still you know ate my meat didn't eat my gluten 
didn't eat my dairy. I ate the same, but I sort of incorporated a few more vegetables, I guess, and probiotics. Also, someone told me to try bone broth. So I brewed my own bone broth because um, the stem cells are so rich in that. And apparently it, you know, really helps your gut flora. Anyways, I did a bunch of research on it and it's why still to this day I have bone broth kombucha and my probiotic tablet. The flash point for me was between 24 and 25. Um, I got my third parasite in Nepal. Needless to say, I won't be visiting Southeast Asia again because I'm a parasite magnet. After having two before Nepal, I flew over with a goddamn chemist in my bag. I was so ready for it. Just like a light traveler's gastro is what I was ready for. And then bang, a strain of salmonella happened. Um, something to do with eggs that I ate in a quiet little village. Um, apparently the fecal matter on the outside of the eggs because of the chickens is like more contaminated and anyways so by the time I came back to Australia I um it was more a psychological thing I think like I went off a bunch of foods that I had never been off before funnily enough I was never off eggs which is what would made me sick in the first place um I never looked at chicken again I haven't bought bread since um, and I ate my gluten-free pasta less and less and I just became like addicted to salad it was kind of the only thing that I trusted I think but my whole body just um, actually rejected me anything would trigger my body off so like literally you know there was such a fine line between me feeling okay and me having like explosive diarrhea me feeling okay and being cripplingly nauseous so I was really, really, really careful. And it was just like a um, instinctual thing. Instinctive? Instinctual? Um, let's go with intuitive. It was an intuitive transition from how I was eating to now being mostly plant-based. I just reduced my meat more and more and started realizing that I was feeling better and better. It's actually really gross to think about now eating meat three times a day. In among that, uh, yes, I was vegan again for like five months. Um, then I was vegetarian for almost a year. And part of me being vegetarian was the meat substitute. So I got um, really hooked on corn. Um, that's Q-U-O-R-N not like corn on a cob, but corn I used to cook heaps, tofu I used to cook heaps, um, like I, I feel like because of my appetite and my metabolic rate, I always needed a meat substitute, I couldn't just have vegetables, but with those meat substitutes, it took me a while to clue on to the fact that these were just not good for me, corn is packed with salt, like alarmingly high in sodium, it's got things on the back of the packet that I can't pronounce. And then I've been diagnosed with polycystic ovaries and they say that a PCOS diet to follow is um, not high in soy. So last year I fully switched to almond milk in my coffee instead of soy. And I reduced my um, tofu intake a lot. So it was sort of like meat was making me feel like shit. Corn wasn't great for me. Tofu was really not great for me. Um, and also my body hates legumes. I feel horrendous. I feel like buckled with like gas when I eat legumes. So, you know, even the vegetarian patties that I was having um, throughout the week were just like really killing my gastric system. So I just felt like I couldn't really turn anywhere. Um, and so really my only option was to just vegetables, vegetables, vegetables. And that's when I like taught myself how to cook vegetarian really well, really hearty and really tasty. And I just haven't looked back because um, my skin, my moods, my concentration, my energy, um, and even my tolerance with exercising has changed dramatically. My gastric system, my digestive system, 
um, I just feel the best that I have felt. Um, but with that, you know, cancelling out things like corn and tofu and legumes, um, I did need to sneak, you know, some sort of protein back in. And it was animal protein. Sustainably caught fish. Always read your labels. But even then, I just, I really don't have that much. So a lot of my meals now are purely vegetables. You know, I don't feel starving afterwards. I function a lot better. And some boring, some staple, but if you know your flavors and you're interested in cooking and you kind of are open to experimenting with flavors and, you know, just mixing up your recipes and stuff throughout the week, then it's absolutely not boring at all. So that's kind of like the dietary sort of health reasons why I eat how I eat. And the one thing I was finding is that I was actually... Uh, inadvertently eating more and more sustainably for the planet so I got quite fixated on that aspect of it so for someone who is at the end of the day okay with eating meat like I can separate my love for animals um, in order to eat a piece of fish and I think for that reason the biggest incentive for how I eat right now is that I'm doing far more better for the planet than I was. I think it's just really important to kind of take into consideration absolutely the health benefits of a mostly plant-based diet, but really ask yourself, like, is the diet that you're following right now um, good for the planet? A lot of people don't know where their food actually comes from. I think in any case, like no matter what diet you follow, there's always something else that you could be doing so if you're vegan uh, maybe you don't have a hundred percent plastic free household or if you're a meat eater look at the many ways in which you can reduce your carbon footprint even just by doing like meat free Mondays uh, it's been proven that going meat free like one to two times a week will significantly help sustain the planet. With going back to what I was saying earlier, I feel like I can really defend how I eat because how I eat crosses over to my lifestyle choices and I know for a fact that I do what I can for the planet, but I still know what I need to do to look after my body. I don't want to feel judged um, or made to feel like maybe I hate animals because that's absolutely not the case. They're my reasons. It stemmed from health and now it is thinking globally um, as to why I eat how I eat. But I think that there are so many factors that come into play when you talk about someone's dietary choices. No one should feel rushed to just transition into plant-based overnight. And I, of all people understand that it is a bit of trial and error, but after each time you try plant-based or try and incorporate it as much as you can into your life, um, it gets easier and easier. You learn different recipes. Um, it is a lot simpler than people think, but you have to at least try and you have to get educated on the dietary and environmental benefits of going plant-based. Um, and I absolutely guarantee that the more you dive into it, um, the more you're going to notice like a difference in your body in every sense of the word. And you're just generally going to feel better about your choices. Um, and I think inevitably you could become vegan. But um, the whole point of this video is that um, I'm taking baby steps and I've had to take baby steps for a lot of health reasons. Um, but anybody can do it and I think everybody should um, so at least try definitely watch um, In Defense of Food it's just the greatest documentary um, there is another one also called What the Health that is a lot more to do with 100% um, plant-based diet but it absolutely opens your mind and broadens your perspective and um, it's so educative um, so yeah, actually the two documentaries that I would say to go and watch, I'll link them below. Um, I'm very tired and you need to go and take a nap. Don't judge yourself. Take it at your own pace. Um, always make sure you're doing the best, uh, thing by your health first and foremost, but, um, it's so achievable and attainable to eat plant-based and we can take baby steps together.
And hopefully this resounds in your mind when you're in the supermarket next, wondering what meals to prep for your week. Um, but I hope that gave you some insight and maybe motivated you to look into a plant-based diet.